In this section, we're going to talk about the product rule, which is basically a function that's a product of two functions. So for example, if I had something like x to the fourth times e to the x, um, in the next section, we get trig. So we could have something that is like x squared times sine x. Okay, so again, that will be the next section. But um, as you can see, I have two functions attached through multiplication. So how the heck do we go ahead and find the derivative? So um, how we do it is that we basically have two pieces. And um, I'm going to use the method that uh, one of my teachers showed me, which is to rename functions. So you basically rename one part u. You name the other part v, and it doesn't matter which one you name u and which one you name v. As long as you have one in each, you're good to go. Okay? Now, you're going to take the derivative of u. So the derivative of x to the fourth is 4x cubed. You're going to take the derivative of v. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And then you cross multiply and add them together. Now it doesn't matter which order you write them in because addition is and multiplication are both commutative. But typically I'll write the main diagonal first, so x to the fourth times e to the x, and then plus the other one. So here we go. So we did the derivative. I'm going to write f prime of x. Okay, so make sure you write this since I'm officially writing the derivative is x to the fourth times e to the x plus 4x cubed e to the x. Now, are we done? Um, yes, we are done, except in the book, they'll typically factor stuff out if they have like a greatest common factor. So I could totally see if this were a book problem that they would see that we had an e to the x and an x cubed in common. So I'd have an x plus four left behind. Students will ask me which one is better. Um, they're actually both good. If you think about real estate, how much space they take up on your paper, it's about equivalent. So I would accept either answer as correct. Okay. All right. Let's do a second example. I'm going to pause the video for a second. And when you come back, you're going to see a new example. In this second example, we're going to do g of x equals 6 square root of x times parentheses x squared plus 1. Now, it turns out that you could avoid the product rule by just foiling it out, but sometimes students want to know, can I just use the product rule? Sure. We're going to name u the 6 square root x. We're going to name v x squared plus 1. Okay. Now, 6 square root of x. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that x as x to the 1 half because that's what it is in fractional exponents. Okay, so u prime would be 6 times a half. x to the 1 half minus 1 is the negative 1 half. So this derivative will be 3x to the negative 1 half. v prime will be 2x. Okay, so here's my main diagonal. Here's my other diagonal. So now I'm going to write g prime of x. Okay, so I have 6x to the 1 half times 2x, so that's the main diagonal, plus 3x to the negative 1 half times x squared plus 1. Uh-oh, be careful. This has to get all of this. Now, I am 100% not okay with you leaving your answer here. Nope, you need to clean this up. So this right here is going to use exponent properties. So exponent properties are, so let me come over to the side for a second. If I have x to the a times x to the b, this is x to the a plus b. Okay? So that's what we're going to use here. So I'm going to have that 6 and that 2 is 12. 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves. Okay. Plus, and now I'm going to distribute this. So when I distribute it, I'd get 3. Now, x to the negative 1 half plus 2 is also x to the 3 halves plus 3x to the negative 1 half. All right. I've got 12. I've got 3. That means I have 15. So this would be 15x to the 3 halves plus 3x to the negative 1 half. 
All right, before I call this problem done, um, one last thing is, is that I am okay with you leaving your answer here. However, in the book, they'll rewrite it with roots. And when we get to chapter four, we're gonna wanna have that ability also of writing it as roots. So let's talk about what roots these are. To the three halves means that this would be the square root of x cubed. So this would be 15 square root of x cubed plus three, and this negative one half is a square root in the denominator. So that's the other way you could write this. So this is of course g prime of x. So we'll just write g prime of x down here so that everybody can see g prime of x equals, and here are the two equivalent ways to do it. All right, that was product rule. Practice, practice, practice.